When the Touareg first arrived over 20 years ago, it became Volkswagen's first premium SUV. And in fact, it was one of the first premium SUVs to arrive in general. But since that time, the Touareg's rivals have become more varied. And nowadays, the Touareg hasn't got the market to itself, which means that it needs to innovate in order to survive, which brings us to this, the brand new Touareg. It's a car with more technology inside, a slightly bolder look, but still that same attitude towards premium materials and an overall high-end feel. But how does it drive? Well, in today's video, we're going to be finding out. Though the Touareg is definitely still recognisable as Volkswagen's flagship SUV, it's more of a case of evolution rather than revolution with the way it looks. We've got a full width light bar at the front, which has become a common feature of many Volkswagen vehicles, while around the back, the lights have been sharpened up too. And some versions even come with an illuminated Volkswagen badge, which is a first for the brand and something that we think actually looks really cool. As you might expect, all versions get large alloy wheels too, which blends into the premium feel of the Touareg overall. The interior of the Touareg always had a nice premium edge to it, but with some really usable functions too. And it's the same story in this latest generation. Compared to the previous car, we've got a redesigned screen, which is still massive, uh, and that blends seamlessly into the driver's display that you got ahead of you. Now, this main screen does have loads of features, and it's full of connectivity options, and it's also got HD maps, which is a big improvement over the previous ones, which were a little bit low grade. The screen ahead of us is still configurable, so you can switch between different screens and settings, but most importantly, it is clear and easy to see. We've got these buttons, which continue to be a point of contention on Volkswagen models because they're just not that intuitive and they're not all that responsive as and when you need them to be. It would be nice just to have some physical buttons as they've put down here uh, for the traction control and for the off-road systems. Also bearing in mind that the temperature settings are located in the screen, but thankfully they are put into one easy to find bar and you don't have to delve through the menus. But again, when the temperatures are cold and you just want to get in the car and switch the heating on full blast, that's going to take a little bit of time to warm up as it does with most screens. But the seating position is good. These seats are nice and comfortable without being too heavily bolstered. And we've got some nice leather stitching and leather effect down the side, which has a dual purpose of both looking good and also giving your knee somewhere comfortable to rest if you are a little bit taller. As you'd expect, being Volkswagen's largest SUV, the Touareg does have plenty of space in the back. There's lots of leg room, lots of knee room. The seat is in my position. I'm around 5 foot 11, and headroom is excellent, even with a panoramic sunroof fitted on this model. There's quite a big transmission hump in the middle, as to be expected from a large four-wheel drive, but because the seats are quite square and flat, it feels like there's a little bit more room here than you might expect, given that transmission hump in the middle. These seats are also on rails, which is quite handy because it means you can tailor between additional boot space or extra legroom. And I think people most of the time are going to go for the extra legroom. You've also got independent heating controls in the middle for the ventilation. And you've got some handy seat back pockets and some deep pockets down the side for keeping things as tidy as they can be. The only thing I would say is that it's quite dark in here with this black leather and the black finish on the sides. But again, you can have that panoramic sunroof and you can bring the blind back, which puts some extra light and brightens up this otherwise quite dark cabin. You expect plenty of boot space from a large SUV like the Touareg, and in that sense, it does deliver. It's got 810 litres of space back here, but just remember that does drop to 655 litres on the hybrid version. It's nice and square and easy to access. It's a good height, and there's not too much of a load lip either, although there is this quite large painted surface, which I think could get relatively scratched up. So I'd be tempted to put something over that, maybe like a flap out or a carpet section, just to keep it looking as brand new as possible. In terms of extra features, we've got some nice plug sockets at the side for charging devices when you're on the move. And you've also got a retractable tow bar, which can be activated via a button. So there's no wrenching underneath to try and get it out if you are towing something. You've also got some handy hooks at either side and some levers to extend the boot space even further, which takes this already very large boot and makes it even bigger. It's a very versatile and usable area. The Volkswagen Touareg's engine lineup is pretty much as you'd expect it. You've got a 3-litre turbocharged petrol, there's a 3-litre turbocharged diesel, and there's also a plug-in hybrid model, which, interestingly, is now available on non-R versions, whereas beforehand you could only get it on the tip-top R. 
The one that I'm driving right now is the 3D Steel, and let's be honest, for most people, this is gonna be the best choice. It'll do zero to 60 in 6.4 seconds, so it's got more than enough performance for most occasions, and it'll deliver just over 34 MPG combined, which is quite respectable for this size and weight of car. Of course, if you're gonna do shorter journeys, then the plug-in hybrid is gonna make a lot of sense because you can do those shorter journeys on electric power alone and not have to interrupt the petrol engine but fortunately if you do have to use that petrol engine you've got a three liter turbocharged engine under the bonnet so that when that electric power is actually finally exhausted you're actually relying on quite a nicely sized engine as well rather than some sort of piddly four cylinder what's the seating position like in this Warwick? well again it's all quite as you'd expect i've got a nice high seating position with that elevated view of the road ahead which is one of the main reasons why people love suvs it's quite confidence inspiring the good news is that these forward pillars are quite slim though so my view isn't too obstructed by those pillars and thanks to a really large rear screen it's a good view out of the back too the seats themselves are very comfortable and it doesn't feel like this is going to be a car that's going to prove very difficult to drive over long journeys in fact i feel like this is the sort of car that you'd want to take from each end of the country and it'll do that quite happily without any fuss whatsoever. The steering fe feedback that I'm getting isn't all that impressive, but that's something that we've come to expect from electronically powered steering racks. There's not a great deal of feel, but it is accurate at least, so I can put the car where I need it to be whenever I need it to be there. The response that I'm getting from the engine is good too. Sometimes these big heavy diesel engines have a bit of difficulty in delivering their power accurately and when you want it, but the throttle impression that you're getting here is good. There's a lot of nice roll on performance and most importantly, it's quiet. It's very hushed in here. I'm only traveling around these country lanes at relatively modest speeds, but I'm not getting too much feedback from the tires nor from the wing mirrors, which are quite large. Of course, it's a physically big car, so you do need to be slightly aware of its proportions when you're driving around tighter roads. And certainly if you've not driven a big SUV before, I would say make sure you test drive the Touareg first, because again, if you're not used to it, this is gonna feel quite big and quite tricky to pilot around smaller areas. Big diesel engines also have something of a tendency to be quite clattery, but this one doesn't feel too bad. Again, being a three liter, means that you don't kind of get that slightly van-like sound quality that you get from some four-cylinder units and in a big heavy car like this you just need that kind of silky roll-on performance and it also backs up that whole premium feel that the Touareg has always gone for. The Touareg also has a maximum towing capacity of three and a half thousand kilograms so that it's more than enough up to the job of taking on a trailer, a boat or a caravan. Touaregs are a big hit with caravanners, and if you indeed tow your caravan with a Touareg, why don't you let us know in the comment section below and if there's anything you'd like to change about it, and whether or not this new version addresses those changes. This latest Touareg feels like a nice revision on the previous generation car. It is by no means a back to the drawing board, ground up revelation of a change, but the tweaks that have been made do make the Touareg more effective than it once was. The new screen inside is sharper and more intuitive to use than beforehand, while the level of comfort that you get in this car is still excellent and should make this Touareg into a really good long distance cruiser, just as you'd probably expect it to be. The addition of a plug-in hybrid offers a slightly greener alternative to this diesel or the petrol, but just remember that it does come with that practicality penalty, which might put some people off from switching to that electrified version. Thank you for watching this motors.co.uk new car review on the Volkswagen Touareg. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and let us know in the comment section what you think of this latest generation Touareg. And since you're here, please remember to subscribe to the motors.co.uk YouTube channel. And if you hit that bell icon, you'll get notified each time you upload a new video.